Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let'sLearnThisTogether.com, the best place to learn game design and development with Game Maker Studio. Check out my website today and my three course bundle to go from beginner to expert in no time. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a smooth follow effect with the camera that we created in the last video. If you've been following along in the series, then you now know how to create cameras with code, which is all you need to know how to do to be able to recreate this effect. This is going to be a lot smoother than the default follow of negative one or even a specific speed number that you can set in the GUI or when you create the camera, because we're going to take over complete control and move it along a percent of distance from the player. Now that might sound kind of confusing, but I'm going to break it down as we go and you will be very pleased with the final effect. I guarantee it. So let's jump in. So what we're going to look at in this video is how to do a smooth follow of an object. Right now, what we've got so far is a constant number that we set in for the X and the Y speed and it works, but it doesn't look great. So I want to come up with a much better system that kind of snaps to the player, moves faster when it's further away, slows down and just has a much better feel all around. This and the next couple of tutorials that I'm going to be doing is inspired by Game Maker Station Matharu in his video, the Smooth Camera Tutorial Pan and Zoom. I watched it, I loved it, and I'm taking a lot of his code that you can find in the project and using it, but I wanted to give him a shout out. So you can check out his channel and subscribe if you're interested in more tutorials from someone else. All right, let's dive into a smooth follow here. So we're going to set up a new object to be able to eventually snap to so that we can change to move between different objects. So I'm going to make a new object and I'm just going to call this OBJ player two. I'm going to create a new sprite. It's going to fill it in with some white here and I'm not going to put any code in it. So we're not going to be able to move it, but that's okay. Inside of OBJ camera, I'm going to add a key pressed event for alt and I want to just change where we're actually going to be following. So in the create event, I'm going to make a variable first. We're going to say camera target equals OBJ player. We're going to come back and actually do something with this in a minute, but I just want to set this logic up first. So I'm just going to say if camera target is equal to OBJ player, then we're going to switch it to OBJ player two. camera target equals OBJ player two. Otherwise, switch it back. All right, that's all we need to do in that event. Then we're going to add a step event. I'm going to drag it up to our camera and do manual controls. OK, that's everything we need to do for that. Now we can actually get to the coding. So what we're going to do is create a system where we control the camera completely and where it's at and where we want it to move. So one thing we need to know to do that is actually going to be how fast we want it to move. So I'm going to make another macro here and call this camera speed and set it to 0.1. This 0.1 is actually going to be 10% of the distance between where the camera is. So if it's over here, where the camera is and where we want it to go. So each frame is going to close 10% of that gap. So when it's further away, it's going to snap a lot faster. And when it gets closer, it's going to slow down. So it'll look very smooth as it's following. So we have the camera target. Now I want to comment out this line here where we set up everything. Uncomment out this one because we're going to take over manual controls of all of this. We're going to leave all this commented out and everything down here the same. We're going to go into the step event and now inside of here, we're going to make several local variables that we can adjust the camera with. The first one is going to be camera X and we're going to use the function camera get view X. And this function returns the top left of wherever the camera is. So in our room, when our camera moves around, the top left is shifting all of the time. And that is what's actually being displayed kind of on the screen. So the top left is, well, the top left of our camera. So we want to get it for our global dot camera. Then we're also going to need the Y of our camera. So we're going to use the same function, but with a Y at the end. Now we know inside of our level, 
where the camera is at, at least positioning in the top left part, which is fine, because we can just do a little bit of math to make sure that we always put it in the center of where we want to go. So now we're going to do target X is going to be our camera target dot X minus camera width divided by two. So because we set the target to a variable that we can change, that will allow us to actually switch over who we're looking at. If we didn't and we set OBJ player here, we wouldn't be able to update which what we're looking at. So that's making it general, putting it in a variable is very useful. Now we want to get the target Y, camera target dot Y minus camera height divided by two. So we're getting halfway to where we want to go. So this is going to center in on whatever target we're looking at. And we also want to make sure that we don't go too far. We want to use some clamp values here. So we're going to target X is going to be equal to clamp and we're clamping target X zero and the maximum it can be is room width minus camera width. So I've done it in the past where you can actually put this inside of the clamp, but that would make it really long. And this is just another way of doing it. So a clamp keeps your variable between the minimum here and the maximum here. And this way our camera will never be outside of the level and it's not going to be looking at nothing because if it did, then we just have black on our screen, which is not what we'd want. Now we're gonna do the same thing for target Y. So the minimum it can be is zero and the max it can be is room height, not room width, minus our camera height. Now we want to smoothly move it as we go along. Now to smoothly move something, we're going to use a special function. We're going to assign a new value to camera X. So this gets where we are at, but we want it to actually be moving. So we want to move it a little bit each time. And the way we're going to move it is by using the function lerp. And lerp stands for linear interpretation. And what it does is it interprets between two points, A and B, you pass in, and the amount to interpolate. So the example they have here is zero and 10, and then you pass in 0.5, which would stand for 50%, and it will return five because the difference between zero and 10, the 50% difference between those is five. So that is where our camera speed is gonna come into play. So 0 0.1 is gonna stand for 10%. 0 0.01 would be 1%, and one would be 100%, which would mean no following, like it would follow, but it would just be instantly snapping there. So we want 0 0.1. So it's going to be 10% and it'll look really nice. So we're going to pass in two points where we're at, which is camera X and where we're going, which is target X. And the amount is camera speed. Now we'll do the same thing here for the Y. We don't have to use a different function. We just pass in the camera Y and target Y and that will do it. Now, right now, if we run this, nothing will happen. Our camera is just going to sit right where it is because we haven't actually applied the changes. We are changing our variables here, but we haven't actually done anything to the camera itself. To do that, we're gonna set it with a function, camera set view POS, which is, stands for position. So global dot camera, we're going to move it to camera X and camera Y. So now we've done everything that we did with these functions here. We have set it the border. So we're not going too far in any direction where we set the target ourselves with our target or with our camera target variable. And we've set our speed with our macro here and using the functions lerp. Now, when we run this, it's going to follow our camera target. There we go. So now when we move, you can actually see that the camera, we can get like a slight bit ahead of it and it follows behind us. And if we stop or jump, it like moves really, really smoothly on us. How much you want it to move, that's completely up to you and the kind of game you're creating. But this to me feels a lot better. And now if we press Alt, well, we forgot to put the player two in the room. So you get an error. If you try to follow something that doesn't exist, it won't work. Let's run it again. 
And now if we press Alt, it'll jump to that object. So that's really, really cool. With a dynamic camera, like we have right now, you can change between objects anytime you want. So this is great if you have a game with multiple objects that you can control or a cutscene that you're switching between different characters that you want to focus on. I think this camera looks and feels way, way better than the default camera. So you can put all of this inside of a script and call it smooth follow and then run that, which is really, really cool. So that's what smooth follow looks like. You can change the value of your speed anytime you want and that'll just update the speed immediately. So five is pretty much instantaneous, not completely, but pretty close and putting it to 0 0.1 would make it very, very slow. It will eventually get there. It's just that when you get closer to the end, 1% difference between almost there and there is very little. So it slows down tremendously. So don't do 1%, 10% is a pretty good value. And that is a smooth follow that works really nicely and you can put in any of your games. I hope you liked that. If you did, hit the like button. I would really appreciate it and it helps out a ton. If you want to see more content from me, then hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of more videos that I put out, including the ones in this series, where we're going to continue to cover how to pan around, zoom in and out, and add split screen up to two and four players on your game, which will be awesome. If you want to find courses from me, you can check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com, where you can go from beginner to expert in Game Maker Studio. So that's what I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.